Don't get caught in the flames of a nasty real estate closing. Did you know that in Florida, the consumer has the choice to pick your title company? So why not choose? And don't let someone else choose your fate. As a former firefighter and best-selling author, Kevin Thatcher of Independence Title will be your lifeline for your next real estate transaction. Kevin founded Independence Title in 2003 on the premise of going in the deal together and leaving the deal together, leaving no one behind. You have a choice, so choose wisely. Call Kevin today before it's too late. 754-200-3883 or visit TitleRate.com. That's 754-200-3883 or TitleRake.com. And now, welcome to the show! Hello everyone, welcome back to another real estate podcast. My name's Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO of Independence Title. That's right, the Chief Everything Officer. And we're coming at you with another fantastic episode today where we're talking about one of the most common topics you're seeing in the news, which is real estate fraud, home stealing scams, wire fraud, everything to do with real estate fraud. And today we have a very special guest, one of our um, uh, title angels. If those of you that follow us on social media saw, uh, we posted a picture, all the girls decided to go out and take a picture uh, behind my truck, which has a license plate uh, in my industry title and uh, they took a picture so instead of calling themselves Charlie's Angels they call themselves the Title Angels so Viviana welcome thank you for having me today on your podcast Kevin a pleasure to be here to bring knowledge to all the consumers out there so we set the stage so Viviana I met through a local gym I was training with uh, Viviana and her husband you see Vivi at all of the uh, investment club meetings and in the office she's kind of the first line of defense in the office so when you call the office with a problem, typically she's the one you're going to speak to to try and solve it. So I wanted to bring her in today uh, just to kind of have a conversation about some of the things she's seeing because I'm great with formulating the responses and the answers, but I'm not the one screening the phone calls. So Vivi, clients are calling. We see fraud. We've been on obviously Fox News, NBC, CBS. What do the clients want to know? Well, the clients, they do call. They want to know what are the, some of the best ways that they can protect themselves against title fraud. It's a great question. You know, we, we just got an award from the Broward County Mayor and Broward County Property Appraiser for our efforts in uncovering the fraud here in, in the county and working very closely with them and the state attorney. You know, when we talk about title fraud, there are two components that I like the consumers to really understand. There's pre-fraud and then there's post-fraud. So the pre-fraud is talking about people that are trying to sell properties that they don't own. Uh, and that is usually coming to a sense of a vacant property. A lot of times we're seeing vacant homes, foreclosed properties, but the biggest scam nowadays are vacant lots. That's the one we've been on the TV most for, uh, and we see vacant lots. And these are where these fraudsters are, are creating fake identities. They're communicating with real estate agents saying, uh, I'd like to list my property and sell my property. It's free and clear, no mortgage on it, uh, and they pretend to be the seller of the property and somehow successfully get the closings through. Uh, usually not with us, we're stopping them. And I say usually because anything can happen. We'll talk about that later, you know, when we cover, you know, what title insurance covers and doesn't cover. Uh, but, you know, we, we like to look at that as, as kind of pre-fraud. So that's the prevention of getting your home stolen. And the only prevention that we can really come up with is consulting an attorney, because obviously we don't give legal advice. We want clients to understand that you have to encumber your property with some type of lien or mortgage. Maybe if you put a small mortgage on the property, when the title company runs that report, they're gonna see your name, phone number, email address in public record uh, in order to order a payoff on that property. So it's not coming up to be a free and clear property where they're not looking to talk to anyone. If you own a property and the mortgage has your information or the contact information, they are going to reach out to get a payoff from you and you are going to know about it. One of the other strategies we came up with the other day was setting up Google Alerts. You can set up Google Alerts on your uh, pretty much anything, right? A name, a, a business name. You can set that up with just about anything. And if you set up a Google Alert with your property address, anytime your property is listed on any type of public website, you should hopefully get the alert. So, so those are two things that you can do uh, in order to stop the, the pre-stealing of your home. 
And the post stealing, unfortunately, once your home's already stolen, there's not much you can do. The award we received with Broward County, that was in connection with their brand new owner alert program, which as soon as it came out, you remember they called the news. Right. NBC did an interview with us about that. Uh, and just you just have to realize that that is once your home is stolen, they'll notify you that a deed has been recorded and then you have to go through the legal process. Uh, so prevention is always better. And uh, hopefully you found something of value by listening to that section to know what you can do should you own a free and clear property. Awesome. That's great information, Kevin. So you did mention one of the signs is a property alert with the county. I know so not every county is offering that. What are some other signs of title theft that homeowners can look out for? Ah, absolutely. That's actually a great question. Um, you know, we see the owner alert program, as we just said, is, is once your home has already been stolen. Some counties have it, some counties don't. We encourage and we set up fraud tips on a website when we did the NBC uh, it's on our website when we did the NBC interview, but it talks about checking the property appraiser's website quarterly. Go to the public record. You know, unfortunately, in Florida, there, there are some great things with living in Florida. Obviously, a lot of people are moving here. They're leaving all these, uh, these corrupt states and moving to Florida because we have a lot of freedom here. We didn't close one day when it came down to COVID. Uh, it just wasn't a big thing here. We, we continue to operate our economy. And, you know, we look at these things that you need to check public record, right? Pu everything is public record. So that's the downside of living in Florida. Your entire life is on the internet, uh, everything you own. So, so picture this, you buy a house, you get a mortgage, your signature is a public record. You drive your car, you get a, a traffic ticket, your driver's license, your height, weight, driver's license number, address, is all of public record. So you have to realize that when all of your information is of public record, you need to now understand that you are a you know, potential victim of some type of fraud and identity theft. So you know that's the number one thing you can do is basically the same thing that the property appraiser does. Obviously, you're not gonna check it daily, uh, but if your county that you live in doesn't have it, then I would just check the property appraiser. You can set an alert monthly, you can set an alert quarterly, but you should log on to make sure that the property still shows in your name. And this podcast is not meant to scare you. Typically, if it's a home that you're living in, they're not coming after those homes. They're coming after vacant, rundown foreclosures that are easy to steal and vacant lots that there's nobody living at uh, because it's a very easy way for them to steal your property. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you for that information. And I believe there are multiple forms of title thefts. What are the most common that you are seeing here in the state of Florida? Yeah, so the most common is going to be lots. That's what we're seeing. And it's not really so much in South Florida. It's more in the northern areas of Florida. A lot of these areas that have a lot of vacant land, they were places that they were going to develop before the market, you know, kind of took a little bit of a right. turn. Uh, so we are seeing that in, in areas that it's not common for people aren't really living there. They're just buying vacant land. Vacant land is the number one fraud that we are seeing, and it's going to be uh, the, the deed theft. They are basically going to come in, they're gonna call a real estate agent in the area, say, I'd love to list my property, I have two, three, four vacant lots, and the agents we know, especially in this market, they're hungry, right? They're hungry. The, the market is a little iffy right now, so they'll take anything they can get. So they figure, oh, someone calls them, they don't do any verification, typically they're not getting on the phone with them, and they will uh, send all the contracts via email. They will get these documents notarized. They will send them back to the title company and they will basically pretend they're the seller of the property. They set up fake bank accounts and the title company, if they don't do their research properly, which we can talk more about what we do to prevent it, uh, most of these title companies are, are just trying to get these deals closed as quick as possible. And unfortunately, that's where the fraud happens because if they don't catch it, the real estate agent doesn't catch it, these fraudsters will get away with uh, all of that money and they are pretty much, for the most part, untraceable. That money moves so fast, it's going to be very hard to track. Uh, you know, we were at the Nova uh, College a couple of weeks ago at the Cyber War Room. We had the FBI came in and did a presentation and they were just talking about how they don't have enough agents to even track this stuff. So part of that is like, what do we do? Uh, uh, you know, the only thing we can do is prevention. It's going to be very hard to stop it once it's already happened. So prevention is why we produce 
podcasts like this. Prevention is why we get on the local news channels and try and create as much content as possible to make people aware of what to do to stop it from happening. Because once it happens, it's going to be very, very difficult. Right. Awesome. And here in the state of Florida, a notary is required to transfer the deed. What are some of the signs that you can look out for in a notarized document to know whether it's valid or it's not? It's actually a great question. And, you know, we're one of the leading title companies on uncovering deed fraud and fake notaries and fake signatures. You know, part of that is because we have certain measures in place, like our number one measure. And I talk to title companies all day long. We don't allow clients to get documents notarized on their own. We require them to either do a remote online notarization with us, or we require them to meet with one of our notaries that we will send wherever they are. So we have a a national database of notaries. Most title companies don't want to pay the fee, and most clients don't, they don't want to pass on the fee and have the extra charge. So they say, oh, I'll take it to my friend who's a notary, or I'll take it to my bank who's a notary. We don't personally allow that unless we do a really good vetting of the client to know who they are, or maybe they're working with a law firm and and it's going through their attorney, but we try and vet that. But that's where it happens, right? The notaries are fake stamps, fake people, everything is fake. But when it comes to a title company, they look at it as, I have a document, it's a deed, it's signed by the seller, it's notarized by a legal notary, and it has two witnesses, so that means it's valid. But does it really mean it's valid? No, it doesn't mean it's valid. It means that it needs to be further investigated whether it's legitimate or not. So a lot of the other things we're going to do is we're going to look up the actual owner of the property and we're going to see, is this property their homestead, meaning they live where the property is located? That would tell us that unless they tell us they're on vacation, they're probably going to get the documents notarized in the county in which the property is located. So if we all of a sudden see a New York notary come in, we're going to question it. Well, why was it signed in New York, but it was FedExed in Miami? So that's going to trigger us to say, hey, that's a fake notary. Because there's no way possible the document was picked up in Miami, but you have a New York notary. So we're looking at these things to look at the different types of stamps, uh, out-of-state notaries, when we know the client very well lives here. So when it's a vacant lot, we look at what's the address on the property appraiser's website to where they live. So if they own a vacant lot in in Duval County, Florida, but they live in Broward County, we're going to want to make sure the notary is in Broward County or we're going to ask a question. Where are you? Why are you away? What's going on? We're going to have those conversations with people. We want to make sure we get on the phone with them. Like, who are we talking to? Like, do these people sound like they're legitimate? I can't tell you how many times Chinese passports, South American passports, that we know they are not legitimate. They're they're on the blacklist. We look at it. We can smell it out. But it really is going to take a title company or a real estate attorney that cares more about the transaction and the clients than they do the check. If all you're working for is the money and the paycheck, you will allow these to go through. And I hate to tell everyone that this claim does not fall on the title insurance. This claim falls on the title company. The title company is going to be responsible because they made the mistake. So you bought title insurance, which that's a whole nother conversation, but it is going to fall on the title company for making the mistake. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you so much for that. Definitely. And you've mentioned title insurance. So basically when a homeowner purchases a home here in the state of Florida, they're provided with an owner's policy when they purchase that home. Does this owner's policy cover them from title theft? Well, yes, but no. And and the reason I say that is because I do a lot of these podcasts and I talk to people about title insurance. And the number one job of a title insurance company, of any insurance company out there, whether it's homeowner's insurance, car insurance, life insurance, health insurance, is what? Deny, right? Deny, right. deny, deny. Right. So they're going to deny your claim. And we have claims that we've seen going that they try and deny and they're not going to defend it and they want more information. So the reality still comes down to prevention. But something like this fraud, yes, would it be covered by title insurance? Eventually, yes, it would be covered. The problem is it is going to fall back on the title company for making the mistake. The title company is responsible. And one of the things we tell clients from the beginning to do is if you're working with a title company besides me, 
because we know at Independence Title, we are the most ethical title company around. So if someone called me and said, hey, I need a copy of your insurance because I need to file a claim, here you go, no problem. But if those of you that watched our Fox News story with Patricia Verlino, we know that she called the real estate brokerage and she called the title company, asked for a copy of their errors and omissions insurance, and they just flat out told her no. So again, if you called me and said I need it, I would send it to you because if I did something wrong, I would want you to file a claim against me so this way you can get paid. We, we didn't do this purposely. There's, there's nothing, you know, if we made a mistake, we make a mistake. That's why we have insurance and we pay tens of thousands of dollars in errors and omissions insurance and cyber liability insurance because we know mistakes can happen. But for me to sit here and not provide you my insurance is almost borderline criminal. So, you know, if you're working with another title company, ask them, can I get a copy of your errors and omissions insurance so you have it up front should something go wrong? Because when it goes wrong, everyone is going to point fingers and they're going to deny it. Like the Patricia Verlina was a great story where the, the real estate agent and the title company took zero responsibility and she was left basically getting evicted from the, the apartment she already moved into because the seller let her move in early and she lost, I think it was eighty three or $84,000 because what I believe is the real estate agent got compromised uh, their email and they sent her fraudulent wiring instructions to send her money uh, somewhere else. So moral of the story is yes, title insurance will cover you in the end if it's a valid claim, but they will try and deny as much as possible until eventually they are pressured to make that payment uh, unless it's something so obvious. But like I even have one now where a title underwriter missed a mortgage on the property from a, a previous owner. And they're going through trying to fight it as opposed to just paying it. And our client, who is the buyer, is like, I'm being foreclosed on. And we're like, yes, I understand. I have to explain to them. I, 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 I'm on your side. I get it. Like, I, I know what you're going through, but they are not going to just pay it. They're going to try and deny it. They're going to try and negotiate it. They're going to try and finagle their way out of paying the least amount possible while you're faced with a foreclosure and people knocking on your door and letters coming in your mail saying, you know, you're in foreclosure. And she's like, I'm not in foreclosure. But unfortunately, they try and deny. So yes, title insurance will cover you. But when will they cover you? And uh, as long as you know who that title insurance is with as well. So get copies of insurance ahead of time. Very, very, very important. Yes, that is very important, Kevin. Thank you. And let's say in the unfortunate event, our consumers here are part of title theft. How should they go about reporting this? Well, again, another great question. And, and we get asked that all the time. I mean, I think the first part is to call the FBI, right? If you're part of it, you want to call your local authorities, make a um, claim against the um, you know, with the police department. So you call your local police department, they're probably going to be so useless and do nothing about it. They're not going to know what to do. Uh, although I love law enforcement, everyone knows that, but we've done this time and time again, where we've worked with the police, we've worked with the state attorney, we've worked with the FBI. And unfortunately, usually it's either too big or too small for them. Uh, so we want to make sure that you're reporting it to your local authorities. You want to call the title company that did the closing, because uh, more than likely, if you were part of title theft, you were not part of the closing, so you want to call the title company on that recorded deed and tell them what happened, and you need to get a claim in as soon as possible. Obviously, hiring an attorney is another great uh, thing you can do. You give a, an attorney a call, and you just start that title claim process. You want to start holding everyone accountable. So first one is getting your police report done. Very, very important. If it's a large enough, if it's wire fraud, something, a, a big, big theft, you can call the FBI but then you want to hire an attorney and get as many insurance claims filed with the title insurance underwriter, with the errors and omissions insurance, and all of that will be done uh, more than likely by, by placing a phone call to them or getting an attorney involved. Wow, great information. I do hope that everyone has been taking notes on how they can protect themselves against something that is actively growing here in the state of Florida. So Kevin, I know that you have closed many, many real estate transactions in the almost 20 years that Independence Title has been opened. Why is it important for someone to choose a title company that they trust? Great question. So we are experts at what we do. And I always tell people, you know, a lot of real estate agents and mortgage companies will direct title insurance business 
to their in-house title company. Maybe they get paid, maybe they support them with their marketing, uh, but they're not really looking out for your best interest. I can't tell you how many friends of mine use other title companies because there's a financial benefit to use them as opposed to picking someone they know will close. Like they are so frustrated with closing with them, but they kind of don't have a choice. So as a consumer listening to this or even a real estate agent, I encourage you to don't sell yourself out for the money. Pick someone that you know, like, and trust. Someone like us, not just because it's us, but someone who can speak on title insurance and all of these uh, prevention methods. Someone who has written books. I've written 10, many of them on real estate someone who has been on local media, national media, someone who has been called as an expert witness, doesn't have to be us, but it has to be someone who meets these credentials that I always say, our shirts that, that we have say, we've got your back. And you wanna make sure you're working with someone that will have your back when the problem happens. Not if the problem happens, when the problem happens, because we know problems will happen and you wanna make sure someone will have your back when those problems occur. Very, very important. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Kevin. All right. Thank you, Viviana, for joining us in the studio today. For those of you listening, my name's Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title. Check out our website, titlerate.com. Give us a like, follow, and share on this podcast. Look out for another episode we're going to have. But more importantly, who you choose to do business with is the most important decision in anything you're handling in life. Do your research, choose wisely, make sure you pick someone you know, you like, and you trust. Thanks for joining us today on another episode of the Real Estate Podcast. And as always, we look forward to seeing you at the closing table. Bye-bye, everyone.